First Glance with Jody Vance. Very excited to have a first timer. Always love it when we connect with a new business joining us here on First Glance because I get to learn a little something as do you, the viewer or the listener. If you happen to be taking us in by way of podcast on equity.guru. Sky Harbor Resources is the name of the company. The president, CEO, and director, Jordan Trimble, is with us. Hi, Jordan. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. And I'm ready to learn a little something about Sky Harbor Resources. Give us sort of the elevator talk, if you will. If somebody is sitting down at the end of the bar with you and says, tell me about yourself, tell me about your company, what do you say? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd offer a drink first and then we get into the discussion. But uh, no, Sky Harbor Resources is a high-grade uranium exploration and early stage development company. Uh, we've been around for almost a decade now. So we saw an opportunity uh, just under 10 years ago in the uranium space, particular in the Athabasca Basin, where all 18 of our current projects are. Uh, the uh, Athabasca is the highest grade depository of uranium in the world in northern Saskatchewan. Uh, but we saw an opportunity to start building a project portfolio uh, post Fukushima and when the uranium price uh, had been hit quite hard uh, and uh, was in a bear market. Uh, we were able to build the initial uh, project uh, portfolio, a few assets that we acquired for really pennies on the dollar. And we continue to add to that over the years. Uh, about five and a half, six years ago, we announced a major transaction with what is now a, a strategic partner of ours, Denison Mines. Uh, we acquired what became our flagship project, which is called Moore Lake. We own 100% of that, and we've been actively advancing and drilling that project. We've discovered additional high-grade zones of uranium mineralization in that project. And then just in the last year, we've announced yet another major and really transformational transaction for the company uh, with uh, an option to earn in up to 100% of a, a another advanced stage exploration asset called the Russell Lake project. And we're acquiring this project from Rio Tinto, one of the largest mining companies in the world. Uh, and in doing so, they've become a large strategic shareholder of the company as well. So that's just a quick history uh, of the company. Um, we are very much focused on uh, high-grade discovery and exploration at our two core projects of Russell Lake and Moore Lake. Uh, but we have uh, many other projects, as I pointed out, 18 in total, uh, mm -hmm. 1.2 million acres of, of ground in the Athabasca Basin. And we do act as a prospect generator, bringing in partner companies to fund the work at these projects and pay us cash and stock. We've now signed option agreements with uh, seven different partner companies that total over 70 million in combined exploration cash and share payments, assuming that these companies earn in at these respective projects. Wow. Okay. This is a perfect time for our listener or viewer to be like, okay, Give me the ticker symbol. I need to know where I find more about Sky Harbor Resources. S Y H. S is in Sam. Y is in yellow. H is in Airy. S Y H is Sky Harbor Resources. And we are with Jordan Trimble, uh, the director, president, and CEO for the very first time here on First Class with Jody Vance. You just gave me a very dense description of what you do. So I'm going to parse it apart a little bit as we tell your story. You brought up Fukushima. And when we talk about uranium, we have to address the elephant in the room with people who are very um, nervous around the word uranium and how that is shifting and changing as the world looks to move away from fossil fuels and to clean energy. Um, some of the catastrophes associated with nuclear power plants uh, historically have become massive stories. And yet the science is really clear when it comes to how important uranium is for the future of clean energy. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I think I think Jody, that's a great point you bring up. Uh, talking about this this really kind of transition um, in in uh, electricity generation, energy production uh, as we work away from reliant our reliance on fossil fuels that are carbon emitting to. Um, uh, sources of electricity generation like nuclear. Nuclear is the only source of emissions-free baseload, meaning 24-7. I think that's a key thing. Finally, the world's waking up to this. As you point out, there is this resurgence, uh, the, this renewal and in, uh, interest in improving sentiment around nuclear, but nuclear is the only source of baseload 24-7. It's not intermittent like renewables. Uh, emissions-free, reliable, scalable, and uh, contrary to popular belief, it's it's actually one of the safest sources 
of electricity generation uh, that we have out there. And so the, the world is waking up to this. That, that's one of the main reasons we're, we've seen a sentiment improve, especially in the backdrop of a lot of these lofty decarbonization objectives that various governments uh, have globally and some of the biggest economies globally. And so nuclear has to play an integral role uh, in that. Uh, it, it represents over 11% of global electricity production. Uh, it, it, uranium, uranium is the fuel for nuclear energy. Uranium demand is growing at about 3% uh, a year. And uh, what we've seen happen uh, over the last decade uh, or so uh, since Fukushima is uh, a major and long drawn out bear market. Post Fukushima, we saw the uranium price decline from about $70 a pound. Uh, it was actually $140 a pound in 06 and 07. It got up to wow. 140 and 07. Uh, and then it was around $70 uh, before Fukushima. We saw that declined down to about $18 a pound uh, back in, in late 2016. And it's been steadily rising ever since we're now trading at our, uh, it's now trading around $50 a pound. And, and uh, I still think we're, we're very much in the early, early innings of a bull market, even at $50 a pound, pound we're well below the price needed to incentivize new meaningful production uh, and mine, uh, mines to come online to meet that growing demand. We've seen yeah. a major supply side response play out where we've had a, a, an overhang of secondary supply and inventory that's that's been dwindling. Uh, we've seen a lot, we've seen a, a number um, of new uh, physical holding companies uh, pop up that have sequestered material in addition to the annual usage uh, and, and requirements of, of nuclear reactors, which really does represent uh, almost the entire amount of demand globally. So we simply just don't have enough supply coming online to meet the growing demand. And, and right. like I said, nuclear is here to stay. And you were talking about Athabasca Basin. And, and again, I mean, so many stats here your portfolio, including the 18 projects, 10 of which are drill ready, covering 460,000 hectares of mineral claims. You've got, uh, you got Moore Lake, you got Russell Lake, you're, you're throwing around Rio Tinto, which I mean, all of this is big time, but it's big time with an extra asterisk beh beside it because so many people over the last three years of COVID have really wanted to invest locally invest in Canada. We're coming to you from Vancouver. I can tell by the mountains and the buildings behind you that you're also in Vancouver, important to people to keep their money and their investments in this country to some degree. Obviously, diversification of portfolio is important, but uh, the importance of talking about uh, how the world relies on these minerals and, and, and this type of mining to feed that global need and and how that strategically places Sky Harbor resources. Yeah, and look on that same thread, I think it's important to bring up um, you know something that's happened here in the last year with this market in particular with uranium. Now, uranium is, as you point out, it's a strategic uh, metal mineral. Um, it, it's uh, it's it's something that um, the West in particular doesn't produce enough of right now and. Uh, an important and very topical point here is this market is bifurcating right now. We're seeing an East versus West uh, play out uh, at that really kind of started with uh, the war in, in, in Ukraine and in, in Russia. Right. It represents a significant amount uh, of this market. If you look at just uh, primary uranium mine supply, they're well over 10%. But then when you look further down the fuel cycle um, at, at enrichment and conversion, uh, they represent about 30 to 40% of those markets. And so we wow. aren't in the West going to be as going to have to be as reliant on Russia going forward. So it's it's vital that we're able to source these materials and these minerals uh, from Western sources. And that's where companies like Sky Harbor and, and other Athabasca Basin exploration development and, and producers uh, are going to play an important role going forward. Let's talk about the World Energy Outlook for 2020 report and, and their estimations on potential here for need. Yeah, well, look, the, so if you look at the supply demand uh, fundamentals for uranium specifically, uh, you, you have uh, annual uh, demand of about 190 to 195 million pounds. 
Uh, and that again, that's growing uh, relatively quickly now. Uh, that's in the backdrop of a primary mine supply of under 150 million pounds. So there's a major structural supply deficit that's formed yeah. over the last, call it six years. Secondary supplies inventories have been able to meet that uh, structural su that, that supply deficit. But as I mentioned, those, those uh, secondary supplies are dwindling. We've seen a lot of materials sequestered. Uh, we, we, right. we just simply aren't producing enough. And so uh, we are going to have to see capital flow into this sector uh, to fund new project development, to fund exploration, uh, to fund CapEx. And uh, that's that's going to, I think, as we just talked about previously, I think that's going to be earmarked more uh, for these Western companies Canada, the US, Australia, um, uh, uranium producing, Western uranium producing regions. Uh, so again, it's it's an exciting time given that there's very strong underpinning supply demand fundamentals for right. uranium. And uh, really uh, you can summarize it as three major macro trends that are underpinning this resurgence in sentiment around nuclear energy and, and uranium uh, as the fuel. Uh, First, electrification, as we talked about, the world needs more electricity. Two, hand in hand with that is decarbonization and clean energy. And the third one, as we touched on, is energy security uh, yeah. and independence. And uh, so it's it's an exciting time for uranium companies, uranium mining companies, exploration and development companies. And it's an exciting time for the nuclear industry. I think there's going to be very strong growth. I, I think that'll be added to uh, with the advent of small modular reactors and some new advanced nuclear technologies, especially. Uh, as it would pertain to growth in the West. But we're seeing major, major growth in places like China, India, uh, parts of the Middle East. China alone is building, planning to build 150 new nuclear power plants uh, over the next 15 years. That's 10 nuclear power plants coming on each and every wow. year in China alone. Yeah. 150 nuclear power plants in China over the next 15 years is more than has come on globally in the last 35 years. So wow. where are we going to get this uranium? Um, it, it, that, that's the big question right now uh, going forward. And, and, and again, that's where companies like Sky Harbor and, and our peer companies, uh, we, 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 we are well positioned uh, going into this next big bull market uh, to, to benefit. And pardon the pun, but it sounds like a sustained long-term burn, growth, whatever you want to call it. This doesn't feel like it'll spike and then fizzle based on just what you said there. Like the, the infrastructure that is being built is costly enough that you need this one mineral or metal in order to fuel those nuclear power plants. So it's it's a it's a big deal. Now I, I could talk to you honestly, I could pick your brain all day long, <laughs> but I want to know a little something about you. How did you get into this? What's your background? Yeah, so I, I've been working in the mining industry um, for about 12 years now. I, I come from a, a finance and entrepreneurial background. I'm a, a CFA charter holder. I, I served the full six-year term on the, the local society here, uh, CFA Society of Vancouver. Uh, and I started uh, initially with a gold company called Bayfield Ventures. I uh, ended up becoming the corporate development manager there, and we ended up selling that company uh, after a successful uh, exploration um, and and discovery uh, process that that uh, yielded uh, a, a high grade gold silver discovery in Ontario, uh, we ended up selling that company uh, to a larger gold mining company called New Gold in late 2013 and early 2014. And that's when I came in to run uh, Sky Harbor Resources, which at the time was really just a shell company. Uh, like I said, we, we saw an opportunity. I teamed up with uh, a, a, a group of geologists, a couple of geologists out of Saskatoon, uh, who uh, both had worked uh, at Cameco. They were senior geologists at Cameco for a number of years, uh, and then built and sold their own uranium junior uranium company called JNR, which they ended up selling to Denison Mines. Uh, and it was shortly thereafter we we teamed up uh, my team here in Vancouver and and uh, we started we started building uh, the asset base. We again what what really drew us uh, what drew me into this space um, was this uh, kind of unique op contrarian opportunity uh, that that we saw specifically in this in this metal uh, and in this sector. And then that that was also that another point to that another layer to that was um, some of these recent discoveries. 
uh, high-grade discoveries that have been made in the Athabasca Basin around that time, including fission at Triple R uh, and yeah. Max-10 at Aero. And these, these ended up generating billions of dollars in return for investors. And it was mm -hmm. it was fascinating watching uh, that those, those discoveries play out. Uh, there were some new uh, ideas, techniques, methodologies being employed uh, to, 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 uh, to yield these discoveries. And that really fascinated me. Uh, and so that's what really drove us and drove me initially to, uh, you know, start acquiring projects in, in, in building this company up. Sounds really exciting. Um, investor info can be found where? Uh, best place to go is our website, www.skyharborltd.com. All of our contact info is on there. I'm very, uh, you, can, you can reach me anytime you like. Uh, we have a great investor relations team as well. Uh, so feel free to reach out and, and, and take a look at the website. Great to meet you, Jordan Trimble. Very informative. Lots to share here. Hopefully you come back and keep us posted on all things Sky Harbor Resources. Really enjoyed this conversation and I'm sure our audience did as well. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. It's like you've done it a million times. I was going to say one thing, maybe I, we, we, it was it was really good. Um, maybe we asked a quick question. Can we stitch in a, a quick question? Sure. I was going to say just kind of upcoming catalyst for the companies we I talked. Okay. Really, yeah. Let's talk, do that. And we'll, and then we'll wrap it again. Sure. So let's pause and I'll set you up. Okay, Jordan, before I let you go, anything upcoming that we should be uh, aware of? Yeah, look, this is going to be the busiest year uh, that we've ever had as a company in terms of drilling. Uh, so we've, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we've now secured an option to acquire up to a hundred percent of uh, the Russell Lake project, which is uh, strategically located just south of the, the the largest, richest uranium mine in the world, MacArthur River, uh, and then just north of the Key Lake Mill, which processes uh, the ore from that mill. In fact, the road that services the, the mine runs up through our Russell Lake project, and we have a 40-person oh. exploration camp that we're staging out of, which will bring our drilling and exploration costs down. But we have a 10,000-meter drill program uh, at this project, an inaugural drill program that we've just started. So that'll generate a lot of news flow and catalysts and discovery potential for us and our shareholders. Uh, we are planning additional drilling uh, later in the year, at continued drilling at Russell, as well as at uh, our other co-flagship project, More Lake. So, so a lot of drilling, a lot of news flow from, from Sky Harbor directly. But as I mentioned earlier, we do have seven partner companies, two of which are joint ventures, five of which are right. still actively earning in uh, under uh, various option agreements. And we're expecting several of these companies will be drilling, will be carrying out meaningful exploration programs. So if they, if any one of those has uh, success, uh, makes a major discovery, will benefit uh, us and our shareholders will benefit from that. Uh, keep an eye out as well for additional option and JV agreements that we look to sign with new partners uh, at some of our other 100% owned projects. And last but not least, the uranium market, the improving, uh, the increasing uh, uranium price. We've seen as the price of uranium moves higher, uh, so does our share price. We've traded well uh, with the underlying commodity. So if you're bullish on uranium, uh, you have every reason to be bullish on the uranium equities. S-Y-H is Sky Harbor Resources. The president, CEO, and director is Jordan Trimble. And you can find out more at skyharborltd.com. Jordan, come back and give us updates on all that you just said there, because I have a feeling you've got a very busy next few months and years ahead of you at Sky Harbor. Absolutely. I look forward to it. And I appreciate that you having me on here. We'll see you again soon. See ya. Thank you.